Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about SleuthKit, and this is going to be a, a general introduction into some of SleuthKit's tools. Um, so I am currently running on a, on a Linux uh, a Linux computer, uh, running Ubuntu, uh, but most of the commands will also work if you're using SleuthKit on Windows. They'll just be slightly different um, the way that you access different files and things like that. So most of these commands um, should work on Windows or Linux um, if you have SleuthKit installed. Uh, just be aware that there is a little bit of a difference between the way the paths are, are, are written. Okay, so first, I already have SleuthKit installed. Um, if you're on Ubuntu, you can install it from the package manager. If you're on Windows, you can download uh, the Windows uh, executables from the SleuthKit website. And I know that it's installed because I can type, for example, one of the SleuthKit tools called MMLS. MMLS. And if we do MMLS dash capital V, okay, dash capital V, then we can see uh, what version of the SleuthKit tools that we have installed. And I'm currently using version 4.3.1, and that's the most recent version as of today. Um, if you're using a version that's quite uh, different than that, I recommend um, upgrading and basically try to keep your, your tools updated as, as much as possible. Um, but if you're using some of them from the package manager in Ubuntu, they will be a little bit older. Um, so maybe just compile them yourself if, um, if you know how to do that. If not, package manager tools will still work fine. You just might be missing uh, some features. Okay. So first from the command line, um, make sure you can actually run your tools. So here I ran the, the, the command MMLS. Uh, and then dash V, and that gives me uh, the expected output. So at least I know my tools are working. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my setup. I'm currently inside uh, my images folder, an image folder, and if I do ls, if I type ls, then I can see all of the files inside that directory. Okay, so ls shows me the files inside that directory, and I see that I have this 4gbusb.dd, and 4G USB uh, uh, .info. And if we want to see what's inside, well, technically both of these, but if I want to see what's inside this info file, then I can do cat, C-A-T, uh, which is used for concatenation, but it can also output, um, output whatever is in the file to the screen. So we can do cat 4GB USB info Okay, and then that will list basically all of the text inside of this info file. And this is just created, uh, an image was created using Geimager, and it just has information about, a little bit about the system that created it, uh, some of the commands that created it, uh, information about the device itself, um, yeah, and then the hash value. So again, the hash value is going to be one of the most important uh, values. So. Uh, here we have this hash value, D0, D8, uh, ending, well, I'll just say ending with uh, 5EFD. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do, I'm going to clear this. The first thing we want to do before we start working with this image is hash the image. And it was an MD5 hash, so I can use MD5 sum uh, on this 4GB uh, USB DD. Okay. And MD5 sum will then calculate the hash value of this four gigabyte disk, and it should be the same value that was uh, registered inside this 4GB USB dot info. And here we have this 5E uh, FD. So we know that this image and whatever was created, at least in this image, uh, the, the info file, are the same image. So. Now we have a good starting point. We know that the, the hash value at least matched from the recorded hash value, assuming the, the recorded hash value is correct. Okay, so uh, so far we've looked into this uh, this uh, info file to get information about the image, and then we created a hash of our uh, our disk image using MD5 sum. Okay, so that's all we've done so far. We haven't actually used SleuthKit tools to do anything except look at the version uh, of the SleuthKit tools that are installed on this system. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I have this image and let's say uh, I don't know anything about this image. So I need to start uh, by gaining a little bit more information about what, what is going on with this image. So I can do IMG 
S-T-A-T, and this is a tool that's also part of the Sleuth Kit. It's image stat, and basically for image stat, you just give it uh, the image directly. Okay, now my image is a raw disk image. It's a DD image, right? So we have a raw disk image. If this was an E01 file or another type of uh, disk image, then some of these tools might not work as expected. So the first thing to make sure of is that you're actually working with a raw disk image or you have uh, like lib EWF installed so that way you can work with expert witness format images. Okay, so image stat, img stat, and then the image name, press enter, and then we see that image type is raw, and it gives the size in bytes. Okay, so relatively small image, we know that we're dealing with a raw disk image, and uh, even though it says dd, we would expect a raw disk image, but this just confirms that it looks like at least that it's a raw disk image. Okay, so now that I know that I'm dealing with a raw disk image, um, <clears throat> we can run uh, MMLS and uh, the disk image name and this gives us information about the disk itself okay so it has a DOS partition partition table the offset sector is zero units are in 512 byte sectors and this is this is going to be important uh, for some of the analysis we might do later okay now each of these uh, entries are basically either the uh, the partition table, unallocated space, or uh, partitions themselves. Okay, so now we can actually see um, the layout of the physical disk. So this basically tells me MMLS and this this for you know, MMLS and the image name tells me the layout of the actual disk. Okay, now this is very important because now I know the start point of the partition that I'm interested in analyzing. Okay, so here uh, we have um, basically three entries. Now there, I mean, there could potentially be something, actually no, the, the unallocated space the length is, ah, the, there could be something potentially in this unallocated space, maybe. Um, not a lot of space really to work with, primary table. So I might be interested in analyzing these two a little bit, but this uh, Windows 95 FAT32 uh, looks like the only real partition on the disk. So I know that this four gigabyte USB disk is a raw disk image, and I also know that is a that it is a physical disk image, and it's not a logical disk image. If it was a logical disk image, MMLS would give us an error uh, because it wouldn't be able to uh, basically parse out the partition table. Um, yeah, so in this case, uh, be aware of the difference between a, a physical disk image and a logical disk image. If it's a physical disk image, you will most likely get uh, some sort of output like this. If it's a logical disk image, then you just basically have an image of only this part and uh, you'll get an error whenever you give, uh, give that image to MMLS. So, Make sure, so far, make sure you're aware of whether your disk image is a raw disk image or some other format, and also make sure you know whether your image is a uh, physical disk image or a logical disk image. What are we actually analyzing here, okay? So mine's a physical disk image because I can see that it's the entire uh, disk, um, and I want to focus in on this partition, so this Windows 95 FAT32 partition, and the offset, the place where this partition begins, is 11264. Okay, so I want to focus in on uh, this partition specifically and start to analyze or get information out of this partition. Okay, so the next thing we can do after MMLS and we, we know the offset of the partition we want to look at is use fsstat o. Okay, fsstat o, and that dash o gives me. Uh, well, with the with dash o, I should give it an offset of one one two six four. Okay, and that means that basically we're trying to get the file system uh, information from a partition that starts at this particular offset. Well, there's only one partition that starts at that offset, and it's this one. What is the file system installed on that partition? Well, it's fat th or it's recognized as fat thirty two at least. Um, we're not sure if it is FAT32 yet, but it's recognized as FAT32. 
Okay, so uh, fs stat dash o, and then the offset of the partition, the starting offset of the partition that we want to analyze, and the name of the um, uh, the disk that we want to analyze. Okay, so fs stat, and then it gives us a lot of information. Let's scroll back up. Okay, so what can we find here? File system information for this partition. Uh, OEM name ms dos five. Okay, it's looking like it's most likely uh, FAT32, okay, volume ID, um, no name for the, the uh, uh, partition, uh, file system type label FAT32, next free sector, okay, so more sector information, file system layout, total range, uh, FAT1, FAT2, where are they located at? Uh, yeah, so basically just information about the file system itself, everything that we can see, okay? Uh, yeah, so fat contents, etc. Okay, so that gives us information about the file system, and the fact that we could actually get that information means that there is, uh, well, it looks like a, a valid file system there. I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Um, so next we want to look into um, basically the directories in the file system. Once we know that there's a file system there, we're interested in the files themselves. So I can do fls-o, uh, and I forget the offset. I'll just do fls-o. So fls-o, and then the offset of the partition that I'm interested in, and the disk image. And then that will give us uh, information about... Um, directories. Here we have directories uh, and regular files inside that partition. Okay, so here we have directories, regular files in that partition, and this has been used quite a bit to do a lot of different things. Um, one thing that you might notice already, we have these CR downloads, uh, which is like a Chrome download, so basically an image this image most likely, or one of these images, uh, was most likely downloaded into this uh, USB stick or this drive, uh, and then the CR download was deleted uh, uh, whenever it was renamed. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm looking for anything else. We have a couple other deleted uh, files. Yeah, a couple deleted directories. So I have this directory here, uh, apparently called uh, Pace, but with this underscore, which means that most likely it was deleted as well. So I'm going to go and let's say we want to look into this. It's uh, uh, inode112. Uh, okay, so fls-o11264 lists all of the files in the root directory. So fls is listing files. And basically, because we didn't give it any other commands, we're just listing in the root directory of that partition on that disk image. So from the disk image, we found the partition offset. Inside the partition, we're listing only the root directory. We can go through recursively listing all of the files, um, but so far we're only listing root directory. Okay, so now I'm going to go into, um, we're going to look, for example, at, uh, let's say this WinMD5 sum portable. Uh, I want to see if there's any files inside of this folder. I know it's a directory because this DD, uh, we have the inode of 25. So let's go ahead and try to get in there. Um, so we can just type FLS, give it the offset of the partition that you want to look at on the physical disk, uh, the physical disk image, and then the, uh, the, the inode of the folder that you want to look into. And in our case, it's 25. So I can hit enter. And then this gives me uh, a couple files, regular files, and a couple more folders. So I can use this uh, basically to go through and look at different files and folders just directly uh, using SleuthKit as a parser. Um, in, uh, in later videos, we will go through about how to actually extract this data once we identify files, files or folders that we're interested in, uh, how we can use SleuthKit to extract this data. So I hope that was uh, helpful for at least getting started. Um, the biggest thing to think about is, um, first off, you need to... Um, you need to get information about the image with image stat, img stat, and then the uh, disk, the disk image that you're going to analyze. So first, we're going to get information about the disk image to make sure make sure it's the right type, basically. Then we want to use mmls to get the layout uh, 
of the disk image, right? So we can actually see if it's a physical disk or if it's a logical disk. If it's a physical disk, we know that we're going to have to use offsets. If it's a logical disk, you do not have to give the offset. Um, so in our case, we have a physical disk image. Um, so we need to get the offset of the partition that we want to actually analyze, which in our case is 11264. Okay, and then you can use FS stat and the offset uh, 11264 with um, the disk image name 4GB USB DD. Okay, so in this case, we can get the file system information from the partition at offset 11264. And if there's multiple partitions in here, I can give the starting offset for multiple partitions and different commands mm -hmm. to find out what file systems are installed. Okay. And then FLS lists uh, the uh, files within uh, a given partition um, by default just in the root directory, but you can list, for example, recursively, you can list uh, deleted files, uh, you can do a lot of different listings there. Uh, 1124 and then you have to give it the disk image name right and then that gives me a list of all of the files and then if I want to um, look into any particular file or folder I need to give the inode address of the actual folder or potentially the file that I'm interested in so we'll use the inode address for the files later to extract the data okay um, so that's pretty much it for starting uh, if you are stuck on any of the commands, so for example, MMLS, if you don't know how to use MMLS, you can just um, type MMLS or any of the commands without any arguments, and it will give you a help menu. And this help menu is extremely helpful, really. Learn how to use help menus, uh, especially in basically most programs in Linux, but especially for the Sleuth Kit. Um, it will tell you a lot of different things. So let's just for now do... Um, do the help menu for FLS. Okay, I'm gonna clear this FLS. Let's just go through this. So first, uh, FLS is the command. Okay, and then everything in brackets is um, basically not required. These are options uh, that you can give the program. Uh, yeah, just everything in brackets is recommended. And then we see that this image is uh, not in brackets and it is required. Okay, so here, uh, Anything not in brackets, you have to have. Everything else is potentially optional. Now, if you give, for example, FLS and just the image name, 4GB USB DD, then we're gonna get an error that says cannot determine file system type, okay? The reason for that is, is we have a physical disk image, okay? And because it's a physical disk image, it doesn't know where the file system actually starts and ends. Okay, so in this case, cannot determine file system type because we have to give it the actual offset here. So if you're getting the cannot determine file system type error, uh, give it an offset of, I don't remember exactly what it was, one one something something. Okay, so you need to give it at least the offset of the where the partition begins if you have a physical disk image. If you have a logical disk image, you do not have to. Okay, so if inode is not given, a root directory is used. So in our first commands, we didn't use an inode, and the inode goes at the end of the command. We didn't use an inode, so the root directory was was used or listed. Uh, in this case, dash a display dot and dot dot entries. These are um, basically the current directory and um, uh, prior directory entries. Uh, some people list that just so they kind of know where they are. I mean, there's a couple different uses for that, but you don't need to list them. Uh, dash D, display deleted entries only. So maybe you only want to display deleted files and folders. You can use dash lowercase d. Uh, display only directories with uppercase D. Uh, display only files with dash F. Uh, display long version with dash L. Um, basically displays the uh, uh, more file path information. Uh, dash I, image type. So some image types cannot be termin determined, so you can give it dash i uh, and then say the image type that you want to use, uh, whether it's raw or some other image type, and you can use dash i list for supported type. So for example, we can use fls dash i list, and it supports, at least in, in my version, uh, raw image types, uh, either single or split, uh, aff, afd, 
uh, AFM, AFFlib, and EWF. Okay, so um, those are all the file types that uh, my version of SleuthKit is supporting because I have different libraries installed. Okay, um, dash M, display the app output in MacTime uh, input format with there is the actual mount point of the image. Uh, MacTime format uh, is what a lot of other tools use. So if you want to export the output of FLS and then put them into another tool, uh, they're usually asking you for MacTime output, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, dash O is the image offset, and we've already used that, the offset in the image file in sectors. So we really need to know the image offsets uh, to be able to analyze the data. Dash P displays the full path for each file. Again, path, um, yeah, path. Dash R recurse on all the directory entries or list every file and directory in the disk image. Uh, dash U display undeleted entries only. Okay, undeleted entries. Dash V verbose output. Uh, dash capital V print the version. Uh, dash Z is the time zone of the original machine. Um, so sometimes it's important to set the time zone of the original machine. And dash S seconds time to skew of the original machine. Uh, so again, a couple different options. Uh, we, right now, we will just show you if you use dash R. So in this case, uh, FLS uh, dash O one one two six four, right? And let's say we can find out where we need to put dash R up here. So it should be FLS dash and then whatever your options are. So I need to put dash R before dash O. Okay. So FLS dash R dash O give the offset number. So dash O is expecting something afterwards, but dash R is not. And then we give um, the uh, disk image. And then I don't need this inode because I'm going to list all of the files. So if I hit enter, then it should list very quickly because there wasn't a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of files inside this, but you see that we're actually going into each folder and then listing all of the files and folders in each folder. So uh, this gives us a recursive list of all of the files and folders for the entire disk. Uh, so that's it for introduction to SleuthKit. I hope the commands make sense, or at least you're able to access the help menus. If you use, for example, MMLS without any arguments, or if you use MMLS, um, yeah, just MMLS without any arguments, any of the SleuthKit commands without an argument will give you this, this help menu. Okay. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you very much.